there's nothing else quite like the Conjurer's Convention videos. Initially, when I set out to make the very first Conjurer's Convention movie, my goal was to make the greatest magic convention blog movie ever made, and I did set out to make one movie. It's almost like stepping back in time when you watch these videos. You're almost, it's like you're there, you know? So that's uh, what was kind of special about these movies. I always focused on trying to provide an authentic experience of the convention to try and make the viewer feel like they're actually there. And as such, it's always focused on the social side of the convention rather than, you know, extracts from lectures or, or performances. It's also really great that these movies record so many characters and so many friends of mine from over the years. And I think long after I'm dead and buried, uh, I think these videos will kind of stand the test of time because magicians from all over the world will be able to look back at these videos and experience what a convention was like back in, you know, 2012 or 2013 or these kind of dates, you know. So it's, to me it's quite important for the sake of preserving history, but at the same time I wanted the videos to be entertaining and I wanted them to be authentic. The movies were also partly responsible for um, bringing more people to the magic conventions uh, because people seen these videos, enjoyed them and wanted to come to the Blackpool convention uh, because of that. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Uh, saw your travel blog in 2012, so it's a lot of fun being here today. Many people over the years have come up to me and spoke with me in the Ruskin and went, hey John, you know, I've seen your videos, I really appreciated them, and this is why I've came to the convention. Which was, uh, it was, it was quite touching, the fact that it had a kind of worldwide appeal. Uh, I've seen the videos that John King did um, about the convention and everything around, and that, that was, was, took me to think like, uh, oh, I have to go there. I, I will really enjoy it, and I did, I did. The convention was great, but everything around it, like being in the Ruskin at in the pub, on the evenings and get people to know, meet and greet and something. It's really awesome. The Conjurers Convention series wasn't my first blog movie series. Camcorders, you know, were a, were a thing. I had a giant camcorder and uh, I, would, I made a series called the Tour of Scotland series, which is very much the same as the Conjurers Convention series, but it was road trips around primarily the north of Scotland, where myself and my friends would go to pubs and we would perform in pubs for lay people or we would um, go get very drunk and, and we would record the weekend. So I kind of had a blueprint before I began. The, the very first of these movies was Tour of Scotland 2006 where uh, myself and two of my friends went up north and had a bit of a carry on. And then the following year, the 2007 one, where myself and my friend Ian McClellan went out and we started performing magic. It kind of set the blueprint for how the Conjurers Convention was going to be because we were performing in bars, we were performing for, for lay people and these movies documented my weekend away. In 2007 there was also a road trip movie which we affectionately called the Tour of Scotland to Blackpool. Uh, even though Blackpool's obviously not in Scotland but uh, we thought it was funny to keep the Tour of Scotland name. And it's almost like a Conjurer's Convention movie before the Conjurer's Convention actually happened. We're about to see John do a fucking amazing, amazing magic trick. I got these two discs. The black right. on one side, white on the other side. Right, right. If you take the two white discs and run them together, they turn into yellow and red discs. Right. If you take the two black discs and run them together, they turn into a green disc and a blue disc. Craig, Craig's a hatred for magic, mm -hmm. but a love for pizza. And in the Tour of Scotland uh, videos, the camera quality varies from, from movie to movie, uh, you know, because some of them were recorded with mobile phones, which had quite primitive recording capabilities at that point. And uh, some of them were recorded with cam uh, camcorders, but you could hear the tapes whirring in the background. So there was they were mixed bag of quality. But the formula for the Conjurers Convention was established by the Tour of Scotland movies. And the Tour of Scotland uh, movies themselves, much like the Conjurers Convention, captured the feeling of you know, being with me on these road trips and uh, taking part in you know, performances which were both magical and musical. Marked five pence coin. And we have here a sealed can of cola. 
Lambs in the can, okay? Don't fuck up. Oh, fuck. Uh, it landed on my t-shirt. I just... Yeah, hopefully this is what. I know Eddie, I know Is that the same coin? Yes, so it's the same coin. <laughs> Came time to doing the very first Conjurers Convention movie. I really wanted it to be something special, and at the time, uh, there was a no videography policy for Blackpool Magic Convention. But society had kind of changed, and rules like that had become antiquated because everybody had mobile phones, and so they had a camera in their in their pocket, ready to take pictures or video. Um, wherever they went and people were recording clips here and there but they, there was nothing quite elaborate because they were kind of do it and doing it in secret you know um, you know they didn't particularly want to be to be seen and kicked out of the convention but they were still doing it and, and the videos were all over social media at the time uh, televisions with uh, 3d playback capabilities was sort of like the the, the latest gimmick and the reason I did the Conjures Convention 1 in 3D uh, was because I really wanted it to be immersive. I really wanted people to be able to feel like they were there. And uh, unfortunately, the problem with 3D is that when you, when you have a blog movie and you're moving about with the camera, it can make people feel quite sickly. And so the 3D um, part of it, although you know, looking very spectacular, um, wasn't all that popular. So when I went down to Blackpool, um, I met up with a, f a friend of mine called Ash Marlow. The very first Conjurers convention primarily follows myself, Ash Marlow, Ben Prime, and Brian Ovens uh, at Blackpool Magic Convention 2012. When it came to making the, the first video, the, the first video is a bit shorter than some of the rest of them and the reason for that was although I recorded quite a lot of extra footage including footage prior to the convention I didn't put it in the final video because I thought that particularly magicians and people that watch these videos wouldn't be interested in my story as such they would be more interested in the magic although I did want to create a balance of the 
out of the video being my experience at the convention and the, the magic itself. But I found that the people actually sat through it. People enjoyed the whole, um, you know, the experience. So when it came to doing the, the follow-ups, there was more of the, the social side of things. There was a lot of there was a lot of cut content from the original Conjurers Convention movie and a lot of this cut content was put into two additional short videos and um, the first one was called uh, Posing at the Waxworks which was actually recorded after the convention where myself and Ash Marlow went round the, uh, the Waxworks, the Madame Tussauds Waxworks in Blackpool and the other one which we called the Extra Bits which was additional cut content there was a lot of really good magic in it as well. In particular, I really liked Matthew Garrett's performance of the Lincoln Rings, uh, the, which he calls the Ninja Rings. It's gonna go through. It happens in one, two. Just on three silently, it goes straight the way through. If I take that back from you, from the front, you would swear that these rings are joined. But if I hold them side on, you can tell that they're not really. But the illusion really is very strong indeed. Now, Ash, we're gonna switch places now. You're still gonna stand there, but hold on to the ring. Rather than me tap down going one, two, three, that's what you're going to do. So you're going to get the ring and go one, two, three. Give it a go. And it goes right through like that. From here, it just joins. So we have two this side, two this side. One, two, and just by three, it goes straight the way through. Just watch, right here is where it's going to go. There's also a really good performance by a magician called Roy Bond, who performs a ring and string routine in the Ruskin. This was actually the first time I had met Roy Bond um, and he ended up becoming a friend of mine and appearing in many of the Conjurers Convention movies uh, on ring on ropes, you do not a ring and, and string or whatever they call it. People call it different things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You think hold on to that, it gives you a hand. You've got that, so you've got to close your hand really tight. So I've been known to steal that ring back and you've, you've still got the ring, right? You know, if you pull that, you'll notice that it's, it's on there. Right? Just turn that hand over. It's just a ring, that's what it is. People don't think that I physically thread the ring on. You can see that's definitely on, right? Definitely. Um, I do this quite a lot. So for me, when you pull on that, it might have been difficult for you, because I do this quite a lot, like I say. There's no, no real effort whatsoever. So if, you, if you hang on to that, if you lift, lift it up, you'll notice that you can't put the ring back on the same way. Because the movie was there to document the social side of the convention, it included things like me performing at karaoke, it had pub crawl footage, it had magic performances, it even had things like me waking up in the morning with a hangover. The initial response to the Conjurers Convention movie was very positive. People really liked the movie and I was asked if I would do a second one. People really wanted to see a, a sequel. And I decided to do the next one at the Sam's Magic Convention in uh, Kilmarnock. This movie itself was different to the first one in that the, it was set over three days. The first day was myself my friend Ian McClellan and my friend Elliot Bibby performing magic in my hometown area, doing street magic and stuff like that. So my hand's empty, cast the shadow once, twice, snap, and it jumps. <laughs> and it jumps. No! Hopefully, it jumps right Wait! to the top. <laughs> so Fuck off, mean. man! So, no now, danger, man! And then now, the, second, it, 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 uh, the second day and the third day was myself and Ian uh, actually attending the Sam's Magic Convention and it shows quite a lot of performances from that convention itself. Please don't blink. On the count of three. One. Two. And like a ghost through a castle. Three. Just hold that. <laughs> anyway, while that's loading up, um, what I would like to do is um, I'd like to read the script to the person on the other end of the phone, word for word, and uh, it's going to have one outcome. Um, can you dial somebody on the phone please that you know that will be in now and that will answer? Do you not know anybody? Don't lie! I can tell whether you're lying in the mind reader. 
Go and please can you shrink somebody? Give a round of applause for trying anyway. Does anybody have a form that we can ring somebody up, please? Go Hello? Hi, Auntie. Uh, Hi, it's Jonathan. Um, can I read this to you, please? Uh, I went to see a show tonight and heard a great story by one of the performers. It was about a little girl who was in a drawing lesson. She was after hearing that story, please name their card nice and loudly. <laughs> Ignore the last part. <laughs> Name a card. Hello? <laughs> Just that one. You'd be crazy. I'll move this because it's confusing, okay? Ignore this! <laughs> Don't look at this! Just watch this one, watch the knot, watch the knot, keep your eye on the knot, watch the knot, because the knot will completely disappear. That is the best trick you've ever seen. Look at that, the knot. Oh yes, come on! That's not bad. I've done something, I've done a trick of the man. Fantastic. I'll tell you what, it's not even a real knot, obviously. Grow up. You see, it's not a real knot, it's a trick one. You can slide it down the road. You can't actually slide a real knot down the road like that. A real knot would stay still. That one's stuck on with like magnets or blue tack or spit or something. You can slide it right down there like that. You can even take that knot, try it when you get home. You can slide it right down the road, right off the end like that, and then you can just put it back on again. It's ridiculous. I tell you what, if that was a real knot, it would be part of the road. You know, oh come on, that's not bad. Look at that. Look at it now. Hey, man. Does it all self exhaust? Don't be this shit. This video you know, didn't feel like it was the same as the first Conjurer's Convention movie. So it was kind of shelved and I decided to actually put, make a Conjurer's Convention 2 but set it at Blackpool. In 2013 I went down to Blackpool Magic Convention intending to do a follow-up to the Conjurer's Convention uh, which became the Conjurer's Convention 2. And I really wanted to um, beat and, and, and produce a, a better video than the first one. Uh, so the second movie ended up being more than twice the length, which was, you know, very ambitious. You know, so it was a, a two-hour movie, and it had a lot more magic, and it also had a lot more of the social side of things as well. In many ways, the Conjurer's Convention Two is quite possibly the best in the series. Similar to the first movie, there was also similar segments like where we would go to the laser maze challenge or we would go for a burger, you know, and that, that kind of thing. There was even a section where myself and Ben Prime went uh, to mini golf and we played the mini golf, you know. So once again, this was kind of deviating from, you know, displaying magic tricks and more about uh, documenting the, you know, the entire weekend. One of the highlights of the Conjurers Convention too is a musical performance that was performed by a group of people in costume just outside of the Winter Gardens in Blackpool. I thought it was one of the best uh, musical parts of, of any of the uh, videos. favourite parts of the Conjurers Convention too is meeting a magician called Cliff who has one of the most amazing classic passes you'll ever see. He just does it so effortlessly and he just doesn't look like a, a magician. You know, if as such, he's, he, he would catch you off guard. You wouldn't believe this guy is the skill that he does. Um, and it's really cool seeing him perform and 
um, in a bar doing things so smoothly when he's obviously intoxicated, you know? The Conjures Convention 2 proved to be much more popular than even the first one, and so making a sequel to that seemed like pretty much a no-brainer. So I went down to Blackpool and once again documented absolutely everything as before. But there was a bit of an issue was it got back to Derek Lever that I was putting out this movie. And uh, Derek Lever at the time was the man who ran Blackpool Magic Convention. And he basically says that I'll be banned from the convention if I don't delete not just the Conjurer's Convention 3, but the Conjurer's Convention 2 and the Conjurer's Convention 1. Um, I wasn't willing to do that, so I picked up my phone and uh, looked up Derek Lever and called him and explained to him that, you know, this is my movie and, and what I'm doing with the movie and why it's beneficial to Blackpool Magic Convention. But unfortunately, he didn't see it that way. I wasn't willing to, to delete my videos and so I sacrificed ever going back to Blackpool Magic Convention. And today, I've never been back. I thought the Conjurers Convention 3 was probably where the series was going to end because without being able to attend the convention, you know, how, what direction could I go in? The Conjurers Convention 3 has, has a lot of really funny scenes, like there's a, a, a scene where I fall on my backside because I'm very, very drunk after being asked to leave a nightclub. Okay, this is Mario's. It used to be Funny Boys, which is used to be... I've just fell on my ass. It also has some uh, performances from the likes of Daryl and uh, Garrett Thomas, some of uh, which are really, really quite good. And the knight will jump off the white rope over to the red rope. Now that's a pretty good trick all by itself, but now it gets more interesting. Getting the knot to jump is the very beginning. Now, if you squeeze it, this is you squeeze it and you slide it off the other side. Is that weird? Here's the best part. Watch the rope, watch the knot. It goes back on. Now, I have some magic dust in my pocket. Just a little sprinkle. And it turns it into a sliding knot again. If I snap my fingers, it melts the rope and the knot together, blending them as one. And then you hand it out for examination. Is that good? <laughs> My name is Garrett Thomas. We're here at Blackpool. I'll show you a quick thing with a finger ring. From one finger to the next without going over the top. We're going to go from one finger to the next without going over the top. I think the, I think the magic is <laughs> So you've already been to doctors and all that crap. You see it and you catch it. The Conjurers Convention 3 also has some cameos of myself. In the background, if you're looking at the background, you'll see myself being green screened in sometimes where I'm also in the shot, so there's two me's in the shot. So there's wee Easter eggs in there, you know, that uh, uh, were added in. Uh, there was also a shot where we included Ash Marlow in the background as well. Um, so although he wasn't at the convention, see if you can spot him, you know. 
At this point in time, the Conjurers Convention series had become quite popular on YouTube and people knew who I was. So this time around, people were actually coming up to me rather than me approaching them and going, hey, I've seen your video, I'd love to be involved, can I show you a trick and things like that. So I got some additional performance content um, just through being you know, well known at Blackpool. Okay, so have you ever heard of a game with three comments? Yes, I have. Okay. So the idea is to follow the key. Where do you think the key is? There. Right in the middle. In the middle. So now, in the middle. You, you might place a bet because it's really easy. Yes. But the thing with this game is you can never win. I'm going to show you why. Can you just hold it your hand nice and flat? And you see, look, the king goes right there, and you see you're already following the wrong card. What? Look, we'll, we'll do this game, keep your hand up. Okay. This time we'll put the eight right there, so all I have to do is distract you so you're not watching the king, then I do the move, he doesn't know where to look. Okay. But that's when I've swapped it. <laughs> okay, but we'll do this again, it's a bit hard to follow because I got three cards and you've got two eyes. So okay. what we'll do is we'll just get rid of the king in my pocket, okay? okay? So now we have the two eights, and the thing with these two eights is they're already distracting you. Where's the king? It's in your pocket. So not here, is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. The eight is actually always in We'll do this again, but we'll do it really slowly. You can see what's happening. This is the move. They never tell you they're doing the move, but this is the move. Watch here. The king goes right there, and even if you think it's your sure bet, don't take it because I'm cheating. <laughs> and the king was always in my pocket. So the thing is, when you win, it's because I want you to win. And when you lose, it's because I want you to lose. But I'm always in control of the cards, and you can never win a game three cards. Magicians, even big name magicians like uh, Jay Sankey, were all too keen to be involved in the, these videos. Magicians could promote their stuff through the through these videos, so it was a showcase for them, and it was it was fun for them as well. You know, they got to be a part of history. One of my favourite magic performances in the Conjurer Convention Three was performed by my friend Brian Ovens. Brian has a, like a unlimited supply of magic tricks at his disposal, you know, and. Uh, you know, throughout the whole series, Brian actually shows his versatility with the performance after performance of, of you know, top quality magic. Which we'll mix together. There you go there, they're mixed. Again, I mean, you can see these cards are mixed. I mean, we've mixed them up and they're totally mixed there. Eh? Would you agree? I hope so. Yep. I didn't hear a yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, and we'll mix uh, these, we'll mix these together. You can see, I mean, they are, they are mixed, eh? We should, would you agree? Very much. They are mixed, there's no doubt about it. I'm going to make a wee prediction here. I'm going to put it in there. The prediction is going to come in the middle pile here. I'm going to go for this. I'm going to predict that the middle pile has got 10 red cards and 10 black cards. After all that shuffling, I'm just going to have a wee look. Oh, look at that. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 red cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten black cards. Now a lot of people say, hey, magic boy, that's luck. But if it was luck, then how, after all that shuffling, how did I manage to separate all these black cards from all these red cards? Eh? I mean, it's a mystery. And the closer you look, you still can't fathom it out. I'd much rather watch someone do sleight of hand card tricks like that than all the crap that's on the TV at the moment. Likes of... A year later, it was coming up to Blackpool Magic Convention time and I was really swithering whether or not to do a Conjurer's Convention 4. The reason being is because I was banned from the, actually attending the convention and I didn't know if it would work not having footage recorded at and around the convention. So, at the time, uh, my, my closest friend was a guy called Paul Moran, and he was part of a, a duo, a, a singing uh, and guitar playing duo called the Soggy Coasters, or the International Soggy Coasters, with a guy called Lee Hind. And we thought, 
why not go down to Blackpool, get some gigs when we're down there, that's singing gigs, and potentially go around the pubs, speak with pub managers and get some bookings for, this, you know, for the summer and come back down and have a, another, you know, uh, road trip in the summer. So myself and Paul and Lee went down to Blackpool and we once again documented the social side of the convention. One of the funny things about uh, this trip was Lee had booked a gig at a place called Scruffy Murphy's and whether there was a miscommunication or not, um, we were under the impression we were going to be paid for it, but the, the um, manager of the bar was under the impression this was just a, as, a, as a trial to see about setting up gigs um, in future. I wasn't privy to the conversation, so I wasn't able to actually say who was in the right here. Um, but either way, I didn't get paid and uh, neither did Lee or, uh, or Paul. Um, that proved to be problematic for Lee because he was uh, intended to use that money to pay for his hotel and had spoke to his um, to the hotel uh, manager saying, look, I'll pay, pay you for the hotel once I get paid from this gig. Turned out he didn't get paid, so he got kicked out of the hotel. You know, mental. Um, so. We're just approaching Scruffy and Mark Murphy's. Uh, this is where the music happens. Uh, Lee's pre uh, performing the new and I'm going to play a couple of songs and John's going to do the grand finale. I hope, hope you've enjoyed the show. Conjurers convention not actually taking place at the convention. Uh, I did think that maybe a name change was going to be appropriate and we originally titled it the Blackpool Invasion but um, ended up just being called the Conjurers Convention 4 because for, for name recognition. Do I scare you? Yes. Bore you? Yes. Not interest you in the slightest? Yes. Intimidate you sexually? Yes. <laughs> I am scared Bored, intimidated sexually, and there was another thing that I've clean forgotten what it was um, by Haley Tranter. It's magic gun. Michael Murray covered in pen this year. This, this is a, a John. This is a John Horn exclusive, right? This trick will be out next year. Uh, have you got a ring that I can borrow? What I do is put it in the hand there, just like this. Now, if you put the hand here like this. Watch what happens. Okay, are you ready? We do this. Look, are you ready? Watch. Like this, we do this. Now, if I was to suggest for one moment that your ring was in this hand, you probably wouldn't believe it. Sorry, could we have that in English? I'm saying, <laughs> if your ring was in this hand, you. And I suggest that you wouldn't believe me, no? There's only we have can prove that your ring is in this hand, and that's if you've seen it with your own eyes, yes? And you would recognise it, yes? yes? Don't lie to make me look good, certainly not on camera. But what do I do is just be honest. That's all I want you to be, is just honest. But yes or no? Simply yes or no? Does that look like your ring? <laughs> yes? Yes. Yes. yes? yes? Yes, it does. Now, are you watching? Watch it. We do this, watch. And your ring jumps back. That is called the ring piece.
Oh, yes, I was to totally blown away by the ring pace. What he's trying to say is he was blown away by the ring pace. Wouldn't be for the first time, though. <laughs> It's going to be next year when this is released. There's going to be several improvements. This is the improvement I'm going to make. I'm going to take this and I'm going to say, put your finger out and push it in. Can you feel your ring? Yes. And now when I do this, okay, can you feel your ring in here? They're saying no. The only way that we can prove that your ring is uh, in this hand is if there's evidence. Now when they pull the finger out, there's brown on the finger. And does this look like your ring? Just bumped into Henry White and he is waiting. A waste. A year later, the Conjurers Convention 5 also starred uh, Paul Moran and myself, but also starred a guy called Lewis Tranter, who was a young magician who we met um, previously at Blackpool Magic Convention. Since the Conjurers Convention 4 was able to stand on its own without having footage actually shot at the convention, we did the same with the Conjurer's Convention 5. This was also the first video in the series where we started to include uh, characters from other videos. You know, as I said, they kind of changed the formula a little bit and added in an appearance from a character of mine called Jack Sharp. Jack Sharp is a sort of uh, television reporter, you know, and he's a bit of an asshole. And so we included a Jack Sharp section at the end of the movie. So, Carl, what did you think of the gala show? I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> I never went. <laughs> You're a dirt. Can you tell us a little bit about the wonderful gala show? Uh, it was shit, wasn't it? Yeah, it was shit. Absolutely shit. shit. What was shit about it? Everything. Absolutely fantastic. You heard it here first. The gala show was shit. Thank you. One of my favourite parts of the Conjurers Convention 5 is there's a section when Paul Moran is trying to perform a, a sort of magic trick with paper for Michael Murray. And Michael Murray does everything he can to make him laugh and uh, really is putting him off. It's, it's quite, quite a funny wee, uh, scene. On this airplane, right, there's a priest <coughs> and a killer. Okay? okay. Mm. There's, there's a priest in the killer on what the one's worse? This plane is crashing, right? Right. This plane's going down. It's like, no hope. No right? hope is what no I'm hope, saying. No hope, that's it. See, the priest that's on the plane has got to pass to heaven. This is the priest past to heaven. Right? This, this is? This, this is literally This right here, this, this is, is a legit This is it. Heaven, right? this if you had that now, right, you could go to heaven. <laughs> but, yeah, sadly, we're not giving out as a prize. You know, maybe it's next year. So that means that, that, that that's him, right? He's in heaven. Uh, that's him, he's... The priest is in heaven, right? I'm not surprised. Then... The amount he'd give up in life. You know, for somebody he didn't then, need, no. They give, they give and they give and they expect nothing in return. Then you've got the killer. He's a nasty bastard, right. him. He's a bastard. I wouldn't trust him. He has to lay out where he's gone for, for eternity, right? Look at where he's going. Uh, this is where he's going right that's now. What do you uh, say? Uh, look at that. That is exactly where it's going. If you ever, if you ever on a paper plane that's about so big like that, right? <laughs> you've got to realise a couple of things. First of all, that what you are actually flying on is a ticket to heaven, <laughs> right? If you keep your fingers crossed, there's not a killer on there. Anyway, I just wanted to say thanks for a really nice audience right here. This guy. Absolutely. You want to hear a flat? Yeah, yeah. Close your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Now look at me. Think of any one of them. You get a ten or a five. Think of one. You got it in your head. Keep saying it over and over again. All right. Keep saying it. Ten, five. Ten, five, ten. I have it. Relax, now, relax, relax, relax. Now, ten times so I can't close your hand. Just there, squeeze tight. What's your thinking of five? Squeeze the ten tight. He wasn't. That's why that's ten in your hand. <laughs> now, I'm only joking. Squeeze ten tight. What's this? It's where the magic happens. Five, ten, one. We take the five and we just shake like this and just tap. See, now I have the ten, see? Just like that, see? <laughs> So about the time we're oh. <laughs> A year later, when it came came time to attend Blackpool Magic Convention, I was intending originally to do the, the Conjurers Convention Six, and then that was to be the final film. But what happened was 
there was some incidents that kind of uh, dampened my enjoyment of the Black Dog uh, convention itself. So I ended up uh, going on to make more. Uh, unfortunately, my, my dad passed away and I was intending to have left long before now, but I had uh, someone attempting to break into my house and vandalise my, my door yesterday night, so the police are just away. But uh, either way, I'm going to head down briefly, you know, for uh, a couple of days. Okay, just to update you, yeah, I'm back at the, the hotel just now. Uh, I have either misplaced my wallet or had it stolen, and I went back to the sea, and they're closed. Um, but I'm fairly certain I had it at Churchill's. Um, and I now have no money because all my all my money in the world is back up in Scotland. So, uh, this has been a pretty mental, uh, mental month. The Conjures of Convention 6 was the first movie that featured James Brewster, who was a friend of mine. And the thing is, James Brewster was well known to uh, many of the viewers of the Conjures Convention series already, even though he had never appeared in the series previously, because um, he had a series called The Brewster Show, which uh, had a, a lot of um, magic-related content on it. And so he was well known to the Conjures Convention viewers. And uh, he had a bit of a rivalry at the time with a magician called Alex William Smith, who had appeared in a few of the videos. And he referred to him uh, as Alex William Smoth in one of his videos. And uh, it's, it's a nickname that's, that stuck. One of the funny things about this was uh, James confronted Alex about, you know, some internet argument um, and I don't think he realised that Alex is one of the greatest hypnotists in the world and Alex put him under like that and, you know, he was buying Alex drinks all night, <laughs> you know, so that was quite funny. You, you said, funny. No, 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 you no, no. said, no, no, just a minute, you said, you didn't you sorry, sorry, balls, sorry, I'm going to have to kneel down to talk to you there, pal. You cannot hypnotise anybody. Try and hypnotise me, because you will not fucking hypnotise me. Sleep! 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 Sleep, you bastard. You will not fall. You will not fall. When you wake up in a few moments' time, it will not bother you, worry or concern you in any way. In fact, you will realise that Jonathan Royal, a.k.a. Alex William Smoth, is your best friend. Three, two, one, you're back in the room. You're right, bud. You're right, dude. How you doing? Long time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, party lad. Yeah. 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 Cheers, dude. Is there or is there not video proof? He bought me a pint downstairs early. It's true. You have the video proof. Seriously, go and get this fucking cut away from me. The new. Seriously, I'm going to go off my fucking nut. Three, two, one. Sleep, 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 sleep. sleep. When you wake up, you'll be my best friend again. You think everything's fantastic, wonderful. Three, two, one. You're back in the room. Yeah, I do. Uh, I don't know where you put your drink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't know where you put it, but... You want a drink, Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, Kelsberg, yeah. Kelsberg, yeah. James Brewster was also f well known for um, having a hatred of waistcoats. And so it kind of had become a bit of a, a, a sort of running joke throughout some of the, the videos where we would slag off people with waistcoats. So you might notice that in a few of the Conjures Convention movies, we make reference about horrific waistcoats. And uh, that's, that's really where that came from. Fucking waistcoat. Right. We have finally met Henry White. I thought I wasn't going to bump into him. And he's wearing a waistcoat. He's seven pound top, man. I've been avoiding this kind of convention, but I'll tell you what, just for you. Why is he going to bar up like He's skiing. <laughs> that was almost brilliant, but I'll tell you what, we'll do this just for you. This is just for you. That's one, this is two. This, I'll tell you what, let's get them all out. There's a few more there, there's maybe one or two, three more. One, two, three, four. There's one more, it's just there. Left. Left. There's also a really good scene in this video where we go out to Churchill's 
and they there's a lot of magic performances and balloon modeling. <laughs> I've not shied a balloon before, but I've never shied a balloon. Oh, my Lucy would love this! I said, my two-year-old daughter would love that. Do you mean? You mean Scottish man, take it from the northerners. Awesome, my daughter would love that. Thank you. You actually got it. I'm not taking it. That's embarrassing for me, girl. Sing it, son. Okay, he said, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a check for ten quid. Took it to the bank, they wouldn't give me the money. Do you know why? He hadn't signed it. They said to me, the woman said to me, Well, if you sign it, you're going to commit fraud. She said, I'll call the police. She said, So you need to go and get the guy to sign the check. She said, Who's this? There's the face. I said, That's me. I'm a magician. I said, Okay. Uh, she said, If you're a magician, you change the check. I said, For your cheek, I will. It's only a tenner. I said, I will just change it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not long after the convention video was put out, I received a, an email from one of the members of Blackpool Magicians Club who had told me that I needed to kind of behave myself when at the convention and I hadn't actually been to the convention, you know, since the Conjurers Convention 3 and from what I have led to believe, somebody had snuck into the convention, had been setting off confetti cannons in the Winter Gardens and when they got caught, they, they had given my name as, uh, as being the person who had set off the confetti cannons. Well, apparently, somebody let off some air cannons. I had no idea they could And I got blamed for it. Now that's magic. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to do with me, but I got blamed for it. I think I think the beard does it. For the Conjurers Convention 7, I went down to Blackpool with my friend Paul Moran. Now, me and Paul had had a bit of a fallout a year prior, so we weren't on the best of terms at this point. I think Paul primarily went down to Blackpool to, to try and make a bit of money doing busking because he, you know, he did well with the busking previously. Unfortunately, uh, Paul spent all the money he had earned with his busking money on booze after the first night and so he wasn't able to busk the next day and so for the remaining two days he was busking basically to pay for his, his digs so he was not a very happy man. This was the first year that Derek Lever was no longer in charge of the Blackpool Magic Convention so by this point, it would have been possible for me to take the camera and go and go back into the convention and film at the convention, just like I had done previously in the Conjurers Convention 1, 2 and 3. However, um, I decided against doing that because I found that I preferred not attending the convention. And that wasn't because I didn't like the convention, but because I found that I was enjoying myself more because I was going out at night for longer and then whilst everyone else was, was getting up in the morning, hung over and going to the convention, I could have a long lie, you know, and sleep off my hangover and then go out and enjoy myself again. So I found it works better for me not at the end of the convention. Although I do, do quite miss the convention as well, to be fair. Carl Deron was previously banned from attending the convention because of a rival that he had um, with Derek Lever. And with Derek Lever no longer being in charge, 
he was welcomed back to the convention and he made everybody know all about it. Gentlemen, I've umped into the legendary Calderon, <laughs> Derek Lever's number one fan. Hey, look, I'm allowed in. <laughs> I've got a pass. Hell, hell has frozen over. So oh, they have heard, I've heard though, it's true, I've heard Derek second the BMC to court because of all these things he's does, but well, he's not letting it rest anyway. So anyway, are you back off to the convention now? Well, I'm not in Benin. One of my favourite performances in this uh, video is one by my friend Brian Ovens, who does a, a card trick in one of the, the bars. And uh, I'll not spoil it, I'll let you see it, it's quite good. We've bumped into Mr. Magnificent. Remember that himself, what's been happening? Oh, well, Drinking all day. Drinking all day. Drinking all day. Drinks are the answer. Uh, it's a question. Drink. Are <laughs> you buying like? I've got a red jerk of hearts. I've got another red jerk of hearts. And I've got an ace, the money card. Known in the gambling world as the big bullet. Alright? So if you guess where that is, you win the money. Right? That's, oh, I'll go for a wee game of that. Bound to go. He says, well, where's the money card? I said, well, I've just seen you slip on the bottom of the cards when I wasn't looking. He says, no, that's a red card that's in the bottom of the card. See, that's a banjo, man. That's what it's. No, the bottom must have been on the top. He says, no. It's a red card that's on top, and that's two banjo, man. I said, if the ace isn't on the top, the bottom must be in the middle. He says, no, it's a jack that's in the middle, and that's three banjo, man. I said, well, they, they must have took the ace out when I was in the He says, no, the ace is on the bottom. That's four banjo, man. I said, well, the ace is on the bottom. It can't be on the top. He says, well, the ace is on the top, and that's five banjo, man. I said, well, if it's on the top, it can't be in the middle. He says, well, it is in the middle, and that's six banjo, man. I says, right. I says, right. So, uh, I said, we've got an extra card there. It goes one, two, three, and that's seven pound, Joe, man. I says, wait, that's enough. I'm just going to give you the money here now. So I went and gave him the money. He says, no, no, I'm a fair guy. Double of quits. He says, I'll make it really easy for you. He says, I'll take the red jack and place it there. I'll take the ace of spades and lay it there. Now, for 14 pound or nothing, I mean, I know what I mean, but what would you go for? The, the jack or the ace? I'm going to for the jack or what? Yesterday, but it's not going to be well, the jack. Well, you'll be £14 as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> oh. Myself, Marcus Jarlin, Les Williams and Paul Moran all dressed up in costumes and went to the Ruskin uh, uh, on one night. Two camels! <laughs> Camels everywhere, man. Thousand dollars. I want to buy her. Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Come, come. Come, come. No, no. You're now mine. Exchange is done. Hello, my friend. Hello. This is shake, shake your booty. We have travelled many miles over the desert and mountains. We are in need of refreshments. And where are you, son? Mustafa. Next, next time, Mustafa donkey. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again, Dave. Oh, is, he ta good. is he taking care of you, Dave? And who, who, are these, who are these ones? Uh, this one is Tony. Is that the Tony? Tony, Tony. Oh, yes, the old Rab character also makes another appearance in this video, uh, this time on a camel, uh, which was quite funny. Another rivalry that also plays out in this video is the rivalry between Alex William Smoth and Paul Zenon. Uh, Paul Zenon had made a remark about uh, Alex William uh, Smoth being the the 52nd biggest twat in magic. So I wonder where I rank on that scale, you know. Issa! Issa! I'm not sad! I just wonder who the 51 other magicians are in the world who are bigger twats than me. I've been told, apparently, yeah. I am the 52nd biggest twat in magic. I call it Paul Zanon. The 52nd oh. what? 52nd biggest twat in magic, according to Paul Zanon. You want to see Camel Toe? My good friend Michael Money has a joke about Cinderella. Can you can you tell us about it? What did Cinderella say when she got at the ball? I don't know. I have no idea. A simple question. I've got a bank in England. Being a Scotsman here in Blackpool, I've been riddled with English money. Because their money apparently isn't good enough. There's two faces on this. Uh, 
20 pound note, two fees currency, that's what I'd call it. But that was the stock here, whose face is on the other side of this note. I don't know. Mind you, fucking idiot. He's just not paying attention. Fuck you. So, Michael, what is, what is joke number two? Joke number two for over 18 Tony. What is blue? And fucks all grannies. <laughs> no, I've heard this one before. Pneumonia, I've heard it. No. Me. <laughs> and the lucky blue suit. <laughs> A year later marked the return of James Brewster, who went down with me. And at this point in time, I had actually um, went on a vegan diet. You know, it wasn't uh, quite a whole food plant based diet or anything. It was just mainly things like eating vegan burgers and vegan junk food and that kind of thing. Um, and Brewster was very anti vegan, um, so slagged me off and points out that I'm vegan to virtually everybody on the whole weekend, which kind of got on my nerves. We'd go to the chops and he would literally go to the cashiers and go, Excuse me, have you, have you got anything for this guy? He's a vegan. Have you got any vegan food? And that kind of stuff really uh, drawing attention to me, which was a pain in the arse. We were in John Menzies there in the, the service station and uh, Booster was uh, just sort of singling me out in front of everybody, just just as he, as he does. He's going to say, see, 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 see my, my friend here, he's, he's one of the vegans, you know? You know, like, like the cunts off a of TV, you know? He's like, so, so it's like, uh, have you got anything vegan here at all? Or is it just corpses that you've got? Kind of a corpse sandwich? And during this convention weekend, I went down to a place called Scruffy Murphy's and uh, I bumped into a bunch of people from a hometown and so it was, it was quite unusual to see a bunch of people that I recognised from my home life uh, down in Blackpool. They were actually down to attend a, a sort of convention regarding Celtic Football Club and so I ended up going with them and meeting some Celtic uh, legends, uh, John Harps and Chris Sutton and uh, a few others. So, but by that point I was, I was very drunk, you know, and uh, probably didn't make the best of impressions. This is really a, quite a nice place. What's the name of the place? The Village. The Village? Yeah. What have you got to say, Pat? No, 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 no. Quiet, quiet man. Quiet man. They're actually heading in to, to do some, to, to a Celtic thing tonight. Celtic TV. Celtic TV thing tonight. I have no idea where, where we are. They're away to do some sort of speakers night. And uh, uh, John's doing a, a, a speakers night thing. Yeah, speakers night in uh, in Bristol. So it should be good. <laughs> yeah, all the best. Uh, Bristol's going to be far away. <laughs> and once again in this video, James Booster gets hypnotised by Alex William Smoth and Alex William Smoth gets him to act out ridiculous scenarios. It's quite funny. Sleep! You will not fall steady and firm when you wake up. You will believe you are Dynamo, the world's greatest television magician. When you wake up, you will genuinely believe you are levitating. For fuck's sake. That's it, yeah, that's... That's massively good, yeah. My name's Dynamo. Down, 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 down. So I've got packet cranes. The only thing is, they're my daughter's, so she struggles sometimes to try and get the pencils out. So I showed her an easy way. I says, all you do is, I says, if you just give it just a wee wave at the top of it, and that's the easy way to get them out. But how do you get them back? That's quite simple, because you just fuck, 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 like that. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, right. I take the right. You can make it like it starts to float like this. And watch if I take a hit. If I shake, you see it floats for real. Just a second, like that. Wow. In fact, if I take a hit, you see it goes up. <laughs> and we'll try this. Watch. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I'm just here. David Paymore. Uh, David Paymore. The, the picture with Brewster. So. The fishmonger's magician. The fish right here. <laughs> when is the wizard product? Review coming back. It's been back for ages. He's obviously not a fan. Oh. This is he's trying to say he's some kind of fan and he doesn't even know where I'm at. You're, you're a fan of Brewster, obviously. Oh, oh, oh my god, I was like I can't contain myself. You know, the fact, the fact, the also Brewster show. Craig Petty, nice guy. Yeah. Who's the nicest guy? I don't know. He is. He's, uh, he is. No, he's really nice. Craig is a lovely guy. You are by the way, you're There's the, a lot of work. I've for got charity. a friend called Kenny Campbell from Cumbernauld and you're his spat image. 
The Conjurers Convention 9 took place in 2020, literally a few weeks before the whole world virtually went into lockdown uh, in response to the COVID-19 scenario. One of the changes in this video was that James Brewster had went on a plant-based diet after learning about the health benefits that it offered and so he was literally on a mission this weekend to try and promote uh, veganism and a plant-based diet to to virtually everybody that he possibly could. It's recent, the last four, four and a bit months, I've uh, been eating a lot more plant-based foods. I've stopped eating dead animals, pretty much. I've stopped eating uh, baby cow's milk and that sort of stuff. So it quite annoys a lot of people as well. And I feel a lot better for it. Um, a lot more energy and stuff like that. John here's been pretty much Vegan, I don't like, personally I don't like the word vegan because you're just labelled to something, but um, I was always sceptical and there was a documentary which I would recommend to anybody on Netflix called The Game Changers, watched that and pretty much overnight just changed completely uh, my diet, just stopped eating butter, eggs, meat, chicken, all that sort of stuff. We've got some veggie straws for the journey, so I'll try these out. The Conjures Convention 9 also has an appearance from my good friend Liam A. Black. This was his first Blackpool Magic Convention experience, so it was obviously quite a significant moment for him. Little did he know that the, there wouldn't be much chance of having another one anytime soon. Morning. Uh, I've got down to the rusk and I've just bumped into the legendary Liam A. Black. Hello. And he's looking <laughs> absolutely fabulous today in his, in his uh, get up. So, what's your story? What's been happening, Liam? Well, we've. Uh... We bought some posters, which has been nice. And then I bought a rubber hammer. And as, as you do, what's, yes. the, what's the purpose of this rubber hammer? Um, I, I'm not quite worked that out yet, but it seemed a good idea at the time. And I bought a big illusion, maybe in a box illusion. Where, where, where are you even going to store this? Um, I, I'm going to get squatters' rights, I think. <laughs> <laughs> for, for those of the, yeah, that aren't aware, he has the craziest house ever. It's just like filled to the ceiling with props and stolen costumes and, <laughs> and stolen goods. It, it's just, it's just mental, you know. And you know, and he's buying illusions and stuff like that now. It's just, it's crazy. I'm looking forward to bumping into Ryan Tricks because uh, he was steaming last night and he was about fighting the Brewster. <laughs> so, Ryan, if you're watching that, Jesus Christ, you're a nutcase. <laughs> oh, One of the craziest stories about the Conjurers Convention Nine was I'd messaged a friend of mine called Michael Samuels and asked him, why are you not here? Because he was supposed to be coming down to Blackpool for the convention for the first time himself. And so he drove from Scotland, you know, roughly three and a half hours to Blackpool, came into the pub, didn't buy a drink, said hello, and then left and drove back up to Scotland. Literally seven hours to, to spend half an hour or an hour in the, in the pub without buying a drink. But um, things are uh, things are all good. So we're nearly at uh, Churchill's. Uh, at least that's what I think. Uh, so Churchill's right there. We're nearly at Churchill's. We're yeah. pretty much at Churchill's. We're literally there. But in fact, <coughs> it, it's, it looks like it's closed to me. Would you agree that it's closed, Jim? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. Okay. And so we were told off uh, James Docherty. There. there is another pub. This place is called Champs. So at the minute, myself and John here are in a pub right next to Churchill's. Uh, we were told earlier on by the legendary Matthew Garrett, legendary James Docherty, that there were a karaoke competition on. You could win 50 quid, blah, blah. So we just going back tonight, 11 o'clock, and it's shut. But at the moment, we're in this pub, and it's actually a really quite a cool looking pub. Anything to say, John? Yes, I just got a, a, a phone call from Michael Samuels. He's on his way to meet us. <sighs> That'll be fun. <laughs> so, we've just bumped into the legendary. You can't just, you, that, that, that's your no, cue. That, that, that's your cue. Man that won the World Magic Network. Keep your attention. 19.
2015, Cubist Musician, Musician of the Year. Yeah. Okay, May introduce, this guy. introduce yourself. It's Michael, you guys know me. <laughs> and, 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 and you are? I'm Chris. <laughs> and he's pushed. That's not awkward. Me and John were here, the room, we're just bumped into these two party animals. I've got the legendary Michael Samuels. Hey, hey. and I've got the Mr. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Samos is the world's creepiest magician here, right? Okay. Yeah, and he yeah. smokes. So and he smoke. I don't know what they're intending to do, just fucking walk about forever. They haven't got digs so far tonight. How about I be the gay magician and disappear with a poof? Oh yes, he's gonna he's, <laughs> he's probably gonna do that anyway. Tell us, give us some insight into what is happening with your your life. My life? Yes. I was called to Blackpool urgently. What are you doing? I'm in a pub. This was the first time since the original movie where Ash Marlow, who was the original co-star of the Conjurers Convention, um, he, he makes um, a, an appearance in the Conjurers Convention uh, 9. And it was the first time I'd seen him ever since. The legendary Ash Marlow has returned. I am back and <laughs> welcome. <laughs> so, what have you been up to? Uh, I've just been into the convention today. Uh, just been strolling around, checking out all the new magic products, how we can um, waste our money. Uh, yeah, it's been alright actually. And how much money have you actually wasted? I actually haven't spent much money to be honest. Uh, the best thing I did buy though were these coins, which were like £2 each. There's also some good magic performances from the likes of Carl Barome, who performs his famous trick, uh, Heat. Yeah. If you check silver paper, and you dip in it, in, is it cold? Yeah. Just cold. That's it. And you rub the coat on the paper. You roll it into a ball. You put it in your hand, close your hand but not tight, and look me in the eyes. And think about the best sex you've ever had in your life. You're going to get warm. You're going to get very, very warm. It's going to travel all the way down your hand. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> hang on, hang on. She's passed the sex test. <laughs> that was obviously High very five. hot sex I had. <laughs> you passed. Oh my god! <laughs> One of my favourite scenes actually takes place um, near the end of the movie we, um, where Jack Sharp, the character, and James Brewster are in a, a pub doing karaoke. I make them hot, I make them shiver, if these get weak, but they never ran around. They see me walk, they hear me talk, I make them feel like the world cloud now. I'm just a sexy boy, sexy boy, I'm not your boy toy, boy toy, I'm just a sexy boy, sexy boy. Thank you. So I have a blank card here. If I give it a shake, I can get four holes to appear on it. Now the interesting thing is I can move them around without touching. So that's the first one. That's the second one. That's the third one. Obviously if I want to, just like a matrix, I can make them go back to four and perhaps back up there. Now the most interesting thing is to finish, like we started, with no holes. <laughs> On your selfie. My wife took my grandson to a football match and as she was walking across the grass she saw this ring. I got hold of the ring and I placed it on the rope like that. Watch close. And I just went like that and I went like that. And what I couldn't understand was I hypnotised it. And she says, how do you make it drop? She says, you talk to it, just talk and say drop, and drop, and it dropped. I have three cards, one, two, three cards. Three blue back cards. And if I just take all of the cards like that, I want you to keep your eye on the cards. I'm going to move sideways a little bit so you can actually see it. But don't blink, because you just might miss the trick. 
okay. Yep. And I just went like that, and all of a sudden one of them changed red. Like that. I thought, well, that's unusual, that is, you know. And I went like that, and all of a sudden another one changed as well, so you got that. And I went like that, and rubbed, and they had three red cards. And yet, they're still the same value. Okay. Well done, sir. Well done. The Electro Magic convention was cancelled, so there could not be a Conjurer's convention 10 in the normal sense. I couldn't have went down to Blackpool and uh, did uh, some filming. So instead, what I did was I took the Sam's footage for the unreleased Conjurer's convention movie and I just sort of reworked the titles a wee bit, made some slight changes to it and put that out as the Conjurer's convention 10. In terms of Magic Convention blog movies, The Conjurer Convention has pretty much done it all. I think moving forward, if I'm going to do another project like this, if you know we ever have another Magic Convention and you know normality does resume at some point in the future, uh, I think I, I'm going to have to shape up or, or you know change the formula um, quite drastically. But um, I've got some ideas which I'm going to keep under my you know under my hat for the time being and we'll see how those pan out in the future. I'm very grateful for all the people that have uh, taken part in the Conjurers Convention movies over the years, and I hope that people who have watched these movies enjoy them as much as I have. Here's your story, let's begin. The water's fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before you. Could be larger than life, bigger than the world. Living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl. You could fly higher than the sky, shine brighter than the stars. You could have all you ever wanted. Shoot the moon and reach for Mars. You know you could. Yeah, the times are changing everywhere. Oh, cool.